Let's look at the, those kind of graduates, unemployable graduates. Yes. What can we do to remedy or what can they do? I mean, if a graduate realizes, oh, my God, I have shortchanged myself or I have been shortchanged, whichever way, you know, the process happened, maybe it was a deliberate action that caused it or somebody, you know, influenced you and, you know, did the runs for you. How do you begin to remedy your situation? <laughs> well, that's what... Um, the <sighs> There are many ways to remedy the situation. So direct answer to the question. I mean, of course, you then go for a lot of professional development, um, uh, you know, courses. You, you, you go, I mean, there are actually programs now being designed by various um, institutions called employability skills, where they teach you the basic things that you should have as a graduate, you know, from um, business writing to uh, communication to listening skills and things like that. You have that. Um, but the question again you would ask is, okay, at what cost and who, who bears it? Mm -hmm. So you have come out, you're unemployable, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden again you're waiting on some government again to help you pay the 30000 or 35000 you need to pay to um, after school graduate program or a faith foundation or whoever to upgrade you. Mm. you know, so, that's, so there are ways to <clears throat> remedy you know, but then the question you will then ask again, the, the next person, the people will say to you, that, and we can't afford it. So that's why we've got to go back again to basis. Let's, so what are we even doing now to stop churning out unemployable graduates? And I think that's probably one of the things at the bedrock. So I, I choose to not look at the ASU strike, just isolated. And I choose not to look at ASU strike in itself as well, but I choose to look at it in context of the entire educational system. But don't you think, do we think that, you know, we uh, are churning out unemployable graduates? Because some also suggest that we churn out graduates with the mindset of go seek a job, as opposed to you can actually do something for yourself. Because if that mindset were to change, people will begin to approach education differently. Yeah. not looking to somebody to save their life. So if you were learning for yourself, you know that what you know, no one can take that away from exactly. you. Exactly. I agree with you, and that is part of, so when I said decomposing the whole education, and, um, uh, and I think the next thing I was going to say was to not properly delineate the roles. You know, so in other words, a mindset change. Of course, the Nigerian problem is a mindset problem. So it's not just education. The because Nigerian, some don't, just don't want to be entrepreneurs. That, you see, that's not even... You, it will amaze you that Nigerians are one of the greatest entrepreneurs that can ever be. You know, because necessity forces us to, to bring out that trait in us. But we are being fed with this mindset of, oh, someone else is responsible for your development. So I'm a graduate, I've finished, I'm looking for a job. Government didn't hire me. Government didn't hire me. Companies don't hire me. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Meanwhile, it's a completely different mindset when you say to you, listen, this learning, do you know how many people even in the schools go to the classes or attend lectures? Do you know how many people just buy handouts and don't attend lectures? Although well, you blame them. <laughs> isn't, isn't the society that ordinarily when you go for interviews, paper qualification stands out. So the man who can actually perform is given the back seat. And the man who heads him is the man who knows nothing about that particular job. Yeah, so which is why I said again, decompose education. Because, you see, the first thing, when, when we look at this whole education and say, listen, it must start first from you as a person and give them options and choices would have, would have solved 50% of the problem. Because, you see, 80% of those in universities today have no business being in universities. When you listen to all uh, musical um, entrepreneurs, let me use that word, they all tell you, oh, I started doing DJ when I was in university. I started, doing, uh, I started rapping when I was in university and all that. If you really, if they're going to be truthful to themselves, they are one of, they are many, they are, they are part of those who were just buying handouts to pass and probably did not really attend lectures. Because they know at that point that, ah, this one now just to get a degree. I didn't know what I want to do. Because they needed to get that certificate either for their parents or for the society. 
But if we decompose our educational system and understand that, listen, it starts from you first. And then from you, the requirements by the global law, you beg, is nine years basic education. After your nine years basic education, there are many pathways opened for you. You that know that, ah, I am a rapper. There is the school of, uh, whether it's the school of music, you know, open for you that post your nine years, you can go there and do whatever you want to do. And then you would come out and get your necessary certifications and you can move in that line. Uh, assuming the parents don't put them under pressure to go to well, the meds. Well, again, well, I guess the parents are beginning to put their kids under pressure now to go and play football. <laughs> because you suddenly realize that your kid that was playing that ball in the back side of your, um, your house, he's got two legs and he was playing the football very well with his two legs. Meanwhile, someone that can play well with just one leg is being paid, what, 85 million pounds <laughs> per year. So I, I think this whole thing, it's about, a, it's, it's about a societal mindset change. And that has come up already. We need to just face it. It has come up already. Well, what, right. what do we also do? I mean, what do we also do about the role of mentoring, quickly? Well, so I think definitely mentoring is part of, um, is part of a balanced society. And that's where, again, when you look at guidance and counseling, you were all in the same generation. When we were in secondary schools, we knew we had guidance and counselors. We didn't know the role they were playing because I think at that time maybe, but at least they were there and they were there to guide us a bit. And that's the beginning of mentoring. You know, it's in the school that your guidance and counselor from observation from your, from your grades really should have been able to tell you are not strong in this, you know, you will do well to go this way, you will do well to do that. And that's how the mentoring, mentoring starts. And then, of course, the role models we have in society also have a role. Those who have succeeded. You know, I mean, the two or three weeks ago when the governor, um, Lagos State, um, when BRF launched um, the um, Enterprise Day, you know, in, which was part of his initiative in growing micro-entrepreneurship right from technical schools in Lagos. What we did in doing the documentary, we went to look for successful graduates of technical colleges. Those who actually went through technical colleges, the same technical colleges we are saying are no good, you know, they went through it, they then built on what they had learned there, and today they have become a success without having to go to investors. All right. Or we learned from those who had actually dropped out, who were forced to drop out because of um, um, uh, family issues. But rather than um, coming, you know, dropping out from investing and saying end of life, they've picked up a skill and they've excelled in it. Okay, unfortunately, we have to end it there. <laughs> but uh, it's a matter that needs, really needs to be tackled. But thank you for coming on this morning. I'm mm -hmm. an education consultant.